coming to you from the James Weldon Johnson Houses. This is our workshop, The Wisdom Table, consisting of young ladies from the James Weldon Johnson Houses and beyond. I'm Brother Leroy, and the program that you're about to hear, The Wisdom Table, does not reflect the views, attitudes, whims, these, or any other proclivities of the management of the community center, nor that of the administration of these houses. However, the program does reflect the research done by the participants in the program who are live in living color in studio and of course there is you once we get set up you'll be able to call in and ask your questions of our guests however we're very happy to have with us in person in person a young lady whose history in serving the black community plus others is astronis astonishing and astronomical and that's Brother Leroy's opinion. Her name is Sister Nan Nankululeku, and she resides in Harlem, but her expertise is that of a midwife. And she has delivered not one, not two, not three babies, but she's gonna tell you how many, because Brother Leroy always says more than what she has done. And she's very modest, all right? So I'm, I'm gonna give you my figure anyway. She's done over 600 deliveries. Sister, she said I'm right, all right? <laughs> and without further ado, we have our sister in the, the line of questioning, questioning is in terms of how did she get into this and the benefit that midwifery has to uh, women in general and making comparisons and also bringing up your own personal stories of having experience with midwives in your family, in your community down south, etc. Sister Nan, Nan Kululeku, welcome for joining us at the Wisdom Table. Mm -hmm. And uh, the very first question is, how many babies have you successfully delivered and uh, enable others to deliver? That's on top of that. On top of the question. Good afternoon members of the Wisdom Table and the audience at large. Thank you very much for having me come to speak to um, to, to, to you and, and, and the audience, and I'm, I'm very happy to do that. Um, I've been a midwife since 1981, um, yes. And I must say that it's just amazing how your husband, uh, Dr. Hyatt, Dr. Hyatt, mm -hmm. I am right. Yeah. He was my pediatrician okay. for, 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 for many years, he was my pediatrician, so I have to say hats off to him. He was my backup pediatrician after Dr. Mm -hmm. um, Sandy uh, passed, uh, mm -hmm. they became my pediatrician. Mm -hmm. um, so he's helped me out in, in many ways uh, with some of the births here in, in the community. Um, <clears throat> I, I got into midwifery, um, I was a teenage mother. And um, uh, I got a job as a as a uh, adolescent health educator years ago. There used to be a, a center on 118th Street. The uh, Urban League had this um, organization, and uh, it was the adolescent maternity program. And my job was to teach these mothers, these young sisters, about um, birthing. Uh, options and, and 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 this sort of thing, and um, when I got the job, I got I did get the job, but I was a little unnerved about the idea of working with these teenage mothers because I never really, you know, had that one-to-one um, -one relationship with them. I you know you see them, how you doing, that kind of thing, but in terms of an intimate relationship, I was a little nervous about working with these with these ladies. But they, they, they um, but after I got the job, you know, I really got involved with them. We did a lot of work together. I noticed in teaching them, talking to these young sisters who were um, new mothers, and but they were interested in, in, in birthing, uh, most of them. Um, and I would teach them, they were going to Roosevelt Hospital, and then I wouldn't know what happened. And I, became, I began to get curious as to, to what really happened to them while they were in the hospital after doing, having their babies. And so that's how I got, got, became more interested in midwifery. I didn't know what a midwife was. 
um, because here in, in New York, we, we, we didn't know what, what, what midwives were. Um, and my goal though, I, I'm, I'm a nurse, but I, but I became interested working with these young sisters um, in learning about midwifery. I, uh, I, I, I have a master's degree from Teachers College, Columbia University, but I had a hard time. I could not get into that into their, their midwifery school. Hard, and I, I was an A student, I thought, but I was rejected. So I went to New Jersey. I, I was able to get into New Jersey, and most states don't have, um, like New Jersey has one midwifery school in the, in the whole state of New Jersey. In New York, there, there are probably three of them, three of them now. Um, and so I finished, um, and I've always lived in Harlem, and I've always uh, became, I became much more interested in the birthing process. Um, I, as a midwife, over the years, uh, I've did a lot of home births, I've worked in the, the hospitals, and over the years I've seen how women, as we speak right now, women are being manipulated and coerced uh, into doing procedures that they are not aware of. They're not aware of it. They don't, and, and I guess it says that we don't know and they don't care, basically. So the C-section rate, all these procedures that are taking place, the cesarean rate has increased in the last 20 years. This country spends more money than any other industrialized country in the world in terms of maternal health and yet, the outcome, the birth outcomes in this country is, is, is horrible. I mean, it's, um, it's 50th. I think this country is 50th behind countries that you would not think of who do have better birth outcomes. And then the, the terrible thing, too, that's taking place as we speak, black women are four times as more likely to die of pregnancy complications than, 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 than our white counterparts. Think about Serena Williams just, just recently with, with, her, with her. So oftentimes women go into the, into the, to the so-called birthing, into a delivery, because there's a difference between birthing, giving birth, because you're empowered and I did it, as opposed to being deliberate. You're lying on your back most, like most times and you have that uh, fetus, the, the monitor strapped on your belly. You're not giving birth in the, in the right, in the best, in the best um, position. Uh, you're not giving anything to drink. You might give it, they give you IV fluids and some, if you got a bag for water. And you're not really, you don't know what your rights are. You don't know what your options are. You don't know what you can do and what you cannot do. Um, and <clears throat> I respect doctors. I must say, I do respect them, but the doctors, the obstetricians are surgeons. And so they're, they're taught to be, they're, they're taught surgically um, how to deliver a woman who have complications. The midwife follows the path of a normal birth in, in that sense. So it, it's, uh, it, it's, it's very different and I, I, I can't for the life of me see why doctors and midwives could not really collaborate and work together to assist women in giving, giving birth is extremely, it's so important. Uh, but the way, we, the way we're doing it right now, the epidurals, the inductions, it just goes on and on and on in terms of what women are experiencing. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you something? Mm -hmm. Okay, you said the epidural, right? Yes. Okay. Why would you take the epidural? Why would you take it? Well, in the last maybe 20 years, there's been this emphasis on no pain. You see mm -hmm. signs in the hospital, the, the rights of the pain, the rights of the pain patient, uh, what, what pain you should not have, that sort of thing. And so I think that is a, a part of it. Women shouldn't have pain, but birthing, Pain is a part of birthing. It's part of birth. It's a part of birth. So why would you take epidural? Because who wants to? Because they they're scared of pain. They're scared of pain. But that's not. But then you don't need to have no children. And 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 they don't know. <laughs> they don't know the process of birthing. That's that part. They think that you know that that 
you go into the hospital and you believe you you know you trust your your, your health provider. You, the, 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 you have to have your, your your paper your list in front of you, and you cannot go to the hospital by yourself. You cannot mm -hmm. do it. You mm -hmm. gotta have your, your backup. Your your auntie, your grandma. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way it used to be. I These ask people. questions before you do anything to me. Exactly. When I find out I'm pregnant, I start asking questions. Exactly. But, but these, 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 these young just, people don't believe in that. Anything to say, one, two, three, they do it. Exactly, exactly. And so they, they hear stories, they get the epidural, which is the anesthetic to the spinal, um, spinal column, spinal fluid goes into the brain and so, and it does numb. The, the the areas that that should be numb, but it does it, it comes with a price, right. um, and there and there are many there there are, there are many types of interventions that you can do you can learn to do on your own without having the the, epi, the epidural, the position, the shower, the water, someone rubbing your back, someone you're breathing in a certain way, and most of all you understanding what the birthing process is. Why are you having these contractions? Uh, what does it do? When, when are you in real labor? Uh, there, there, there's so many factors that we, we, don't, we don't know. And we go in there uh, trusting, okay, and, and, uh, um, and the doctors are important when, when it's necessary. But when it's not necessary, you need another type of, of, of provider. Which is, which is the midwife. And I'm pretty sure, um, when I went to a midwifery school, um, just recently I've been doing some research on the plight of the midwife, particularly the black midwife. That black, that, that, that sister, those sister midwives who helped the slave master, I hate to call them slave master though, mm -hmm. the enslaved, um, the enslaver, that, 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 that's it, the enslaver, I mean, her job was to help these women have healthy babies so that he could make a profit. This was, ec econo this was economics to, to the highest degree. So she, she held a, a high esteem on, on, that, on that plantation. Mm -hmm. Not only did she, did she work with black women, she worked with white women mm -hmm. as well. So she was really um, seen as a, leg she was seen as, as a very important part of, of, of her community. But the doctor said, "No, we gotta get rid of her." Mm -mm, no, and that's what they did. They got rid <laughs> well, of wouldn't every. Wouldn't she be the one that helped them deliver these hard labor babies? Oh, she would be. But you see, obstetrics is a new, relatively new um, part of medicine, and those doctors don't want to be involved with these. It, they call them. They were illiterate. Mm -hmm. They were dirty. They say. They they were unclean. Yes. They did a marketing, mm. a big time marketing project to denigrate each and every one of those midwives, and and, and they did. Between the, the 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 health departments, the medical association, they got rid of every 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 midwife. As a matter of fact, one midwife in Alabama. In Alabama, yes, Miss Miss. Um, Miss Washington, she said that first there were thousands of us, and then there were none. Mm -hmm. All they got, got rid of all, all of them. They they tricked them into pretending that uh, we're going to teach you another way. Of, of, we're going to monitor what you're doing, and so we need your name and address and everything. Because mm -hmm. we prior to that, midwives were not licensed. They were an apprentice, uh, and 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 they started their apprenticeship later on in life. They, many of them had their own children, um, and, and they, they uh, apprenticed to, to Miss, Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley took her, took her under her wing. It was a calling. It is a calling um, that, that, that these women um, were able to fo follow uh, in, in the community. Uh, so, <clears throat> but after they got all this information from them, they, 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 they in, in, internally, they say, okay, at by age 65, we'll have to have them, we won't give them the license anymore. We'll take the license <laughs> away from them. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did. Mm -hmm. They took their license away from them. 
and so they were not able to practice. They, they didn't know this, the women did not know this in advance. Um, and, and most of them, the nine, the majority of those midwives were skilled. They were very, very skilled in, in, in what they did. But the, the medical profession, they twisted around, made them responsible for any maternal deaths or babies dying. Uh, and so, so th this, this was not true. Um, and that was the end of them. Mm. That, was, that was the end of the granny midwife. So what we're trying to do now in, in our community is to get a stamp. We want a, we want a U.S. United States postal stamp honoring the legacy of that granny midwife. Because they, 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 they walked in the snow, uh, bowels, they, they, I, I, I can't, I can't. When I, when I read about what they, what they did uh, in their communities, giving a chicken here and maybe a bag of potatoes there and whatever, or nothing next door, whatever it was that, that they did get for their services, um, I have to marvel at, at, at their, revol their revolutionary work that, 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 that they did. The members in the community really looked up to them. Um, and I think, do, do, have, have any of you um, been delivered by the midwife? No, I was. Yes. No, my sister. See? I was. Can you tell, mm -hmm. us, tell us a little bit about that experience. Mm -hmm. We're just regular, <laughs> regular having babies. That's why I can't understand why they giving you up, why they telling you to take this needle, take this, the numb, the pain in the hip, and come on, that's nature. That's true, that's true. And you if see, you can't mm -hmm. deliver a baby normal, then you should not really <laughs> have a baby. Well, that, 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 um, that, 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 that is food for thought. Because well, if you don't, if you, if, if you shouldn't have a baby, at least you should know you should be able to know no, about your body, about your body, what are your options, um, and so and I, I've also worked in um, in Africa and Somaliland and in another parts of the world. Midwives are seen very differently. They're not seen in the same way they're seen here. In this country, it's fragmented. Some states are, are, are good to, to be in. New York is not a good state for midwives. California is a better state than midwives. Maybe it's Washington State, or um, but the West is, is much more inclined to work to work with midwives. Some states are licensed to the nurse midwife. Some states don't license the uh, certified uh, midwife. So they're, they're they're just different tracks, um, and and for some reason at Harlem Hospital, for example, and I and I'm, I'm sorry to say. There are no midwives at Harlem Hospital. Not, no. not, not one. The last one died a three years ago. And that and so we, we don't have any midwives. And yet we have women who need these providers. Some of these some of the sisters who come from uh, the continental Africa, they 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 they're, they're very used to midwives. Or from the Caribbean. They they're very used to that. But the doctors are there and it's economically yeah. incentive for the doctor to, to, to deliver the baby before. If you had Medicaid, oh no, we're not gonna touch them, no. But once Medicaid raised their rates economically, it became, it, it was fashionable. So we don't have, we don't have a midwife at, at Harlem Hospital. Brooklyn Woodhull has about 16 midwives. Los Central Bronx have maybe, I don't know, 15 midwives. Lincoln, no midwives, and Harlem Hospital, no midwives. The C section rate is thirty three. Mm -hmm. One out of every yeah. one every every one three women they, they, the woman will have a C section. Why? Well, Why? go back Why? over there. Mm -hmm. Go back over there. Say that again. Yes, one out of three women are having C sections. Some places it's, it's even higher than that. But Brazil, I hear the percentage is sixty percent mm -hmm. of women are having C sections. But why are they giving surgery. them C section? Because, because it's scared of pain. Right. No, it's fast. But first of all, it's, it's fast. faster. It's faster. I can plan. But then the yeah. atmosphere you have having after that. 
It's major surgery. Yeah. It's major so surgery. Be lazy. And I can have you come in on, on Friday at, at 6 o'clock in the evening. By 7, the baby's going to be here. If, if all goes, you know, all, all, all things being equal. So it's, it's much more economically ex, uh, expensive and more practical to schedule for the, for the, for the C-section. And even now, instead of it, your term, your term at 40 weeks, now that's, mm. that's being pushed back to 39 weeks. I want you to come in, mother. Yes, yes, you gotta come in. Um, I don't know whether they even told any symptoms. Just, just come in because you're gonna induce your labor. Because so start the labor. Induction is an, it's another procedure mm -hmm. that's overly emphasized. Giving women the pitocin that make your contractions so, so, so strong. But you, I guess you have to have an epidural. The pain is so, so So is that as of how pushing the baby? Mm -hmm. well, or it, is that turning the baby as catching the baby in the right spot? No, it's, 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 it's neither. It's making those contractions stronger, causing that cervix to open up faster. That's what I'm saying. So it, it's, uh, it's thinking that all women or a cookie cutter. So I have my labor lasts 10 hours, yours should be 10 hours, blah, blah, blah. Everybody should have the same experience. And our bodies are so different. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not true. So as we speak right now, I'm telling you, the women are being abused. It's almost criminal. No, they want to be abused. To me. That's well, what I see it. But, but see, they, 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 don't, they don't know. The, the women, they, they, they don't know. They come out with these horrible stories, having to be cut, having the episiotomy. Mm. Instead, of the, instead of the doctors giving... What is that? An episiotomy yes, is a, a procedure, which is the most common procedure, where the woman, instead of the doctors knowing to wait, let the baby's head open up slowly, the, 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 the vaginal opening. Push mm -hmm. it. No, they don't, they don't want to wait. Mm -mm. Takes they too go. long. Cut her. Cut. That's what they did to me. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what Probably they did. Probably all of us. All of us. And I, I, I mean, and the last, that pain lasts a long, long time. I have my pains. Takes a long time for that for that episiotomy um, opening to heal. When I'm most sure times it it's not even necessary. Mm -hmm. you can give, give the woman a chance. First time mothers will take a little bit longer. Yes. Okay. But the, but they they don't really know how to the maneuvers in helping a woman give, 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 give birth. Yeah, because my baby weighed three pounds. Why would they cut me? Well, the baby's premature. That was that was probably, it was premature. They want the baby to get out quick, oh, okay. quickly. Okay. So that, that, was, that was probably the reason okay. but, in that case. But when you say that was probably the reason, is it a reason? Hmm. Well, yes, because he want to get the baby, the baby under like, Five pounds yeah. under they have to come a up. small baby. The baby would probably might have respiratory problems or other problems. A new baby, like like a three pound baby, mm -hmm. would have respiratory some sort of problems. She did most likely. Yeah. Yes. So when, when when the woman reaches come term, here. you have to take the baby, not have to take. Later before That's term, this baby this baby is probably born before term, mm -hmm. prematurely, most most likely. Is, is it true? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The baby that one, 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 yes. Premature. Mm -hmm. That was premature. Yeah. Um, they had problems I want to go too. back to Sister Jenkins. Um, what what position were you in when you had the child? Mm -hmm. the, the one delivered by the midwife. I was in no position. I was okay. No. Were you were you squatting? Were you laying on your I back? I regularly lay on my back, okay. and I took all the babies. I mm -hmm. had all of my four children no more. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I kept up with the doctor the time I get pregnant until the time I had my baby. When the doctor told me to do this, I did that. I didn't sit home, I did not sit all the time. I walked my children down. They tell me to go home and lay down. I walked around this whole project. <laughs> You walk it. There's certain. It makes your baby, when they your say, father open. When they say go home and lay down, and you, I go walking. You, okay. So when they when they said do this, you did that. Yeah, that's that right. means that that was 
basically opposite of what they were telling well, me. That's to do. right. So, okay. You tell me to come in the hospital when my water break. I sit home another five hours until the pain gets so that I know that my child, I can feel my child pressing down. Why should I go up to the Harlem Hospital and sit there looking at them stupid? <laughs> huh? But you got to no. remember, everybody's body is different. different. It takes the pain different. It does every, nobody's two bodies alike. It's different. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that, that validates, how, how would a, how would a midwife or how do midwives work with it within the hospital? What, do, what do they do? How do midwives work within the hospital? Well, she can't, it's almost as if I remember, you have to be sort of like undercover. You can't, uh, you, you have to sort of like work within the confines of, mm -hmm. of that particular setting. Mm -hmm. If the woman is on her back with the, with the fetal monitor yeah. strapped on her, she really can't move to her side from side can't to side. Mm -hmm. Can't do anything. Which is what you would tell them to do. Which is what I would tell them to do. Mm -hmm. I would probably uh, let them hear the baby's heartbeat at frequent intervals, but not to be strapped with that. Yep. You know how you how that feel when you're in pain. You don't want nothing on your abdomen. Mm -hmm choking you up like uh, the, the way the way the way it's done um yeah. so i would i would most likely do that help the mother get up change your position if she's able to get up and most times uh, pre pregnancy and birth is not a sickness for the most part it's it's not an illness the woman is a healthy yeah. woman yeah. most most times there are times when she's not healthy there are times when there is a need for her to be on bed rest or um, come in the hospital when you feel water, but you got water breaks, but you gotta know those symptoms. Mm -hmm. You gotta know why, why am I going in there before I really have contractions, mm -hmm. sort of thing. So that's where the knowledge beforehand comes in. Exactly. Like Sister Jenkins had, had knowledge exactly. going all the way back. Um, that's where you said in the beginning, the, the, young, the young mothers don't know. They don't know. And no. they're submitting. They don't even know what happened feel like. They, they're, they submitting, <laughs> they're submitting to C-sections. They don't know. They don't know. What are the ramifications of C-sections? Mm. Well, for, first of all, it's major surgery. That's 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 the, the one thing um, that, that, that the one has to. Hmm? Put you to sleep. Yeah, you have to be anesthetized. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You definitely have to do that. Yeah. And at the after the after pain, it's it's surgery. So you're gonna have a lot of pain after that baby's born. Whereas you could breastfeed more easily after the baby's born. You get a normal vaginal delivery. You're hampered. You yeah. can't laugh. You can't, yeah. If you laugh too, you might laugh too hard or cough too long. You might have the opening of the of the right. of the of the, mm -hmm. um, the womb mm -hmm. of, the, of the of the of the exactly of the se of the section itself. Mm -hmm. So and then they say they, they claim the doctors claim that once a C section, you always must have a C section. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So and that's that. I just talked to a sister just last week. She mm -hmm. this is a third her third baby. Mm -hmm. This will be a third C section. Now the prior two. She might not have needed those two, but by this time, the now the, the placenta that she has a complication. The placenta is now covering the cervix, so she's going to have to have a C-section. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas before, um, if she had a waited, she would or or, or 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 maybe if she had a a different type of doctor or so, because the circumstances for her to have a C-section did not did not was not really mm -hmm. yeah. necessary for her to have one. This time, it is necessary. Her uh -huh. third, her third C-section. That's more. The more more C-sections that you have, uh -huh. the more, the more complications uh -huh. might might yeah. arise. And wouldn't she have to be careful having these babies with these C-sections because sooner or later it will not heal right. And this is what they're worried about this time. Mm -hmm. uh, with, how will the placenta at uh, Will, will it intertwine yeah. into the uterus? Um, will we able mm -hmm. to get it out in time? So there are other types of, of complications 
that that that, that can arise when women um, have these unnecessary unnecessary procedures or when the providers don't listen to the women oh you know what doctor I think my, you know, my, I have chest pain I'm having well don't worry about it you're, you're gonna be okay take some deep breaths or I, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm being flippant but sometimes um, by the time you wait for your hour to to see the doctor you have you don't have much time five ten minutes probably mm -hmm. you have to get to move along because they're busy you see and women um, need much more time. So the midwife spends a little more time with, with that woman. She's talking to her, mm -hmm. trying to, and so there's, a, there's a, a, a nice flow of information from you as well as from, from that woman. They say with these granny midwives, like we call them granny midwives, not because they were, that was just, an, to me, that's just an affectionate term, mm -hmm. calling these, these elders uh, granny, granny midwives, but they, they had their bag, they had a bag to show and a bag to go. Because so, sometimes in their bag, they may have had, might have had herbs uh, that they learned from their indigenous sisters, maybe a cottonwood bark, or maybe they had um, bedroot, or different herbs that the medical profession was not aware of, or didn't, didn't know a lot of times. They don't know some of the the old folk sit remedies. down remedies, yeah. remedies. That, 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 that still take place to, to this day. Yes, yeah, still on today. Yes, yes. So, some are better than the medicine of today. Exactly. So, um, we're having a conference next month in December, December the 15th, for new mothers and pregnant women, the Harlem Birth Action Committee, here at 110th Street. And we would be so honored if you could come to our conference. Um, the last, uh, our theme was the art of being mama. And being mama is not, you don't learn that right, right uh, you don't learn how to be a mama right away. That, 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 that's for sure. Yeah, you <laughs> never learn how to be a mama. <laughs> Can you give me that the information again, please? Yes, it's December, it's December the 15th, 15th on Saturday uh, from 9 30. 5:30. It's an empowerment and pampering day for new mothers and pregnant women, and the theme this year is going to be uh, the art of mama power because we have so much power. Like we have so much power, but we don't. It's not being channeled in the right way. We we need to march up to that Harlem hospital and demand that we 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 want midwife. We have to become more demanding. We need a revolution, not with guns. But with, 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 with minds, yeah. this, this is what we, we, we demand that we have X, Y, and Z. It's no reason why we should have these rates uh, 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 that, that, that's so horrific in our communities. Content Street, where? 55 East 110th Street. That's between um, Madison and Park. Mm -hmm. It's a free conference. We're going to have. Um, Mainly, we're going to be talking about women's birth stories. What happened to you? How, what happened to you when you were in the hospital? Uh, did you know what your symptoms were? What are, your, what are the symptoms of labor? Um, and we want to get a, 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 a good feel for what happened to them positively, as well as what happened to them on the negative side. Um, many years ago, the, the anesthesiologist, who's the one who, had, who administers the epidural, his room or her room was not on the same unit mm -hmm. as the um, labor and delivery unit. But now, that their room is right next door. Yeah, because they get big pay. They got a they, they're getting big, they're getting big pay. That's right. From your very again. Well, prior, prior to maybe I guess maybe I don't know how many years ago, the anesthesiologist was not on this was not housed on the same time. unit as the labor and delivery. They had, we had to call them up, they had to come over yeah. from wherever they were, were at. But now, they have a room, they're on call right there in, in that delivery room so that you don't have to run call and call. Dr. Jones, Miss, Miss, Miss Smith is here. Uh, she's been in labor for such and such a time. She wants the pain medication, she wants the epidural. Hmm. Or she's complaining, or whatever it might be, they're there to assist. They're there to give you that, that, and 
Those epidurals have side effects too. Mm -hmm. They have a yeah. lot of side effects. I had a cousin and she took one in her hip. Mm. She can't, still can't walk correct. I, I have, I have heard can't find out why she cannot walk. Mm -hmm. Well, they have these headaches, mm -hmm. these splitting headaches that, that develop after after the birth of the baby. She's scared of things. Um, <laughs> all kinds of things may happen. The woman cannot yeah, really adequately push mm -hmm. uh, sometimes Getting when, when she has the, 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 um, mm -hmm. the epidural. Mm -hmm. um, her position is not encouraged. The, 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 the position that the woman is in is for the doctors and for the providers. She's lying down, I can stand here. But for her to be on, on squatting, or for her to be on uh, hands and knees, that, that that's not good for me. Because I have to no, get down, I have to get, gotta down, get down, down and, get on my knees with her. But it's the best position yes. to have to have that baby. I was gonna that. ask you about that. Because mm -hmm. um, I've heard about the uh, birthing stool, mm -hmm. like in Africa. Yes. A regular mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. and, and you squat as opposed to the upper and the forceps. Ex being so in the, 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 the family position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could you tell us about that? Well, the, it's called lithotomy. You're laying down flat and goodness and gracious, the baby should have complications because they aorta, the largest blood vessel in the body. When you're laying down flat, the baby is pressing the uterus, the placenta, mm -hmm. all that's pressing against mm -hmm. the um, the aorta. So of course the baby is going to have going to have decelerations. The heart rate is going to drop down because the way the woman is lying, the, it's a it's a it's a in, infringement upon the flow of the blood through the placenta into the baby, giving the baby the oxygen, whatever is necessary. Um, so it's, it's, it's the worst position of all. It's, it's not a good position for the woman women to be in, lying with their legs up in the air, or not in the air, but their legs bent. And then women are told, take the take their knees, both knees, oh, it's so, so horrible. And and just put your head down, knees here. Mm -hmm. And mommy, push. want you to push. Yeah. Let's, let's count now. One, two, three. It's the most horrific position that you've ever, you see people give birth like that, it, mm. It's horrible. She's out of breath. She's um, she's short of breath because she she has to really um, get get up here, put her heads down, and they're holding yeah. her, holding her legs yeah. like that. No, and it's too much stress on the peritoneum where the baby, mm, the baby that area where the baby needs to, to um, come through, to come to come through. Yeah. So of course, of course, they're gonna, she's gonna be cut because of the way the way the way the uterus. The way the cervix is, mm. not the cervix, the, the vagina, vagina, the peritoneum, that area, that muscular mm -hmm. area there, it doesn't need that stress. And that, that's what it gets when one is pushing like this, as opposed to using gravity to help the baby, to facilitate the birth mm -hmm. is, is much, much more, uh, much, much better for both the mother <laughs> and the baby. But well, they have a, You know, go ahead. I just want to ask a question. Uh, midwife, I know they, most, most of them are way out in the country. Mm -hmm. So what they had to give you for pain, uh, they didn't use oh, epidural right. because back then, because there was there none. wasn't none of that. Mm -hmm. they, had, they had support talking to women. Uh, mother, I, now, okay, mom, I know it hurts, that, that sort of thing, encouraging her. To, to breathe. Mama, come on, let, let's, let's get into the bathtub. That'll help you. No, or have your, your husband. No well, that's true, it's not bathtub, it's true. We'll give you a, a, a hot compress to your back. Because a lot of the, the contractions start from the back and they sort of come to the front, mm -hmm. radiate to the front. So if you're telling that woman, I'll give you a compress, I'm gonna massage your back, you get the husband, the father to help out, and he, he, he becomes a rock. He's a very important um, element, mm -hmm. but in the hospital, probably push him to the side. Well, no, they 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 they're encouraging the men now to take a more yeah, active now role. Now they yeah, them. yeah, they they do they do encourage the the men to take a more active what they are. But then again, you you don't know. 
So you don't know what the hospital is offering you until you go on that tour and uh, ask questions. And you can't be afraid to ask questions to these doctors. Um, you, you, have, you have to know, well, how many C-sections, what do you think about C-sections? Would you be willing to um, let me um, search in, in my position if I, if I want to? Um, so if necessary. <clears throat> Yeah. So it's so. It, can I have something? Can I have some juice for my labor? Because mm -hmm. the woman needs something to drink other than the IV fluid. It's just fluid. She needs energy to help her. You know. Um, so um, it, 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 it's it's tearing our community apart because um, what what. What the mothers and grandmothers used to do, it, and their part they used to play, is not, um, it's not, it's not pursued as as the way it should be. Women should not be coming home from the hospital and going out the next day or two. Mm -hmm. the next day, they come, they come out the same day. And the go same out. day, they, they, yeah. they, they, they shouldn't be doing it. They don't wait they they do no more. No, mm -mm. they do it. They, and, they, and they do do it. If you have them early that morning. That's in them home that afternoon. If and the then, baby's okay and you don't have no fever, you can go home. You right. can go home, but, but, but then at home, see at home is where yeah. that woman needs really to, 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 be, to be in bed. Or take, just being with her baby while her meals are being prepared. She shouldn't be doing all that, going, mm -hmm. going to the WIC program, you know, going to the, uh, the Medicare mm -hmm. appointment all kinds of different things that the woman should not be doing. Washing clothes or whatever, whatever. She yeah, should be, yeah, she really should not be week. doing that. And the elders used to say that your pores are open. Mm -hmm. And it's true, that your pores are really, real. They, they are open. You think about it, if you see how the placenta, how, how open that Cold uterus is, is mm -hmm. the pores are definitely open. The way they're dressed, they, they don't, they're not dressing properly. I see them out there. When I had my first one, my aunt had me in the house a whole six months. Mm. <laughs> well, well, I wanted to go downstairs just to breathe. She said, "You, if I catch you outside, <laughs> yeah, and no walking around here too much." Yes, <laughs> yes. And you couldn't go to the kitchen because they say that's you're, right. You're dirty. You're dirty. Well, you know. You're what? That's interesting. You're dirty. Well, I, I could see them I because see you them. still have that stuff coming out of you. Which is not which is not considered to be dirty, mm -hmm. but I can sort of see uh, their, their way of thinking. That, right. that mm -hmm. doesn't that relate to the spiritual African religion and philosophy? African religion and philosophy um, within that the woman, when she's in a period, doesn't do certain things, meaning. Um, possibly being around food. I've been away from the knowledge a little bit, but it's, see, in the Western world, they, they look down on, they look down on any, any kind of habits or practices that we've had, and therefore they call it mumbo jumbo or voodoo. Um, and we take on their mindset, and, um, Yes. So the old folks might call it dirty, but they meant something else. Yes. You know, it's not, yes. the, the, the spiritual not thing is not right for you to be involved in making food. Exactly. Somebody right. come over and make the food for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. Because in making, preparing food, that's a spiritual thing. It's not just, and, and you all know it, whether you all know it. It's true. Consciously, you know it intuitively. Don't bother me when I'm cooking. Mm -hmm. That's what you're, get out of here with that. Mm -hmm. Because it's not only your focus, it's a spiritual thing that's being imparted to the food, to it's the true. preparation it's of true. food. You can tell when the food is cooked well. Mm -hmm. oh, this is really good. The, the person that said mm -hmm. she put her foot in it. Yeah. Or whatever, yeah. Whatever, yeah. whatever they do. <laughs> but it's, it's a love, it's a, it's a relationship yeah. mm -hmm. that, that, that takes place. So you, you're probably quite, quite right, um, Brother Leroy, um, in the sense that there were certain practices that was just not meant to be dirty in that sense, but it was meant on a spiritual and different, different, different level, and so it came out in, in, in that sense. So I can yeah. understand. But even today, around the world, women are, are in China. Those women are—they they call it during the month. 
they have to spend a month um, in, in, at, at home. Um, we just saw recently, I think there was in the papers, oh, about a couple of weeks ago where in Flushing, um, this woman uh, stabbed the babies, yeah. uh, stabbed the babies, um, and they called it a birth center. It wasn't a birth center, but it's a center where Asian women go to after their babies are born. They go well, to- We call it something else. We yeah, call something it new. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. depression, birth depression. No she, no, she wasn't pregnant. She was one of the workers. She was one of the employees. One of the employees. Oh, I didn't know. Who's, who's that? I who's heard that? about it, but then mm -hmm. I thought it was that she just had a depression. No, no, it was one of the employees who, 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 who stabbed the, the, the young lady. She babies. stabbed this lady's children. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was about but three of them. Mm -hmm. If um, she didn't have no baby, how would she? Because she was working at, at a setting. The setting was, was for mothers to come after the babies are born. Yeah. And they're taken care of. They, they help with breastfeeding. Their meals are given to them. Uh, so rather than being at home, per se, they go into a Yeah, I understood a, that part. A unit. But if she didn't have no baby. I think she was deranged. That lady. She had to be, yeah, she she had had to be like something that. upstairs. Yeah, something was wrong. Something, something yeah, was something wrong, wrong with her. Because if you didn't have a, no baby, mm -hmm. how do you get to be depressed? Yeah, I think she. I think she was deranged. Yeah. But but this is very common in Queen in, in Queens with the Asian, yeah. the Koreans. That's that's what they do. Yeah, they went to this place where they they, they could take care of these babies. I don't want to do deal with my child, so you gonna help me deal with my child. Well, you kill them. well that that's, that's well, one way yeah. of looking at it. The other way yeah. is that it's done for the community. We're not, we don't have a community right now. And what I'm saying is that we, we're in a neighborhood, but we don't have a community where folks are looking out for one another. So within their culture, I'm not saying I'm giving the possibility. Well, it used to be like that with us. It did. It did. I'm saying today. Oh, well, see, today is a whole lot different because if I help these people, <laughs> They're going to go right back before the one that out of my hand and have another one. Correct. Now, why am I the one? Come, well, come on, that's really no, taking no, advantage no. of me. Sister Jenkins, when we think as a community, then we'll know that each birth is a very valuable entity for the community because we don't know who that baby is. We don't know who that baby <laughs> is, just like within our families, the children grow up to do this, they grow up to do that, they become great. There's a LeBron James, there's a today's Harriet Tubman. We don't know who's who. Right. So a community is going to safeguard its children. The interesting thing about China, they had one child more, mm -hmm. now they got two ch children, right? They, in other words, you couldn't have no more than one child. Mm -hmm. Now today, I think they spread it out to two. but. Um, we only have we only have fifteen more minutes, so go around the table. Yeah, and I, have a, I have two questions, but there is a, a term now called it starts with a D, I think. Do you mean doula? Doula. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I thought about the doula. I had never heard of doula, and who who they are. My girlfriend's daughter is a doula. Mm -hmm. So she explained it to me. This is a program. Well, what did she say? She said it's a program where her, her daughter goes into, a person has a child, and they go into the house and help her with all those things, like cooking and yeah. with but the see, baby. That, that's, that's, that's what the family used to do. And, right. See, yeah. the fam and, and what the doula did, doula. what the doula did during labor, it was the midwife's um, the area. Yeah. She might have had an assistant to help her, yeah. um, to help that mother, to support her, blah, blah, blah. But the doula, um, mm -hmm. this, this new entity yeah. that has taken over the role of the midwife, because now I'm beginning to wonder, when does the midwife come? Who, who calls the midwife into the home? Because um, the doula cannot examine the mother. She can't take a blood pressure. She can't take a temperature. She can't do a cervical examination, so I don't really know. I wonder when does the doula 
call the midwife, but she come in the last minute, I'm here to catch the baby. Because catching the baby, I mean, it's so, it's so important to support that woman mm -hmm. during her labor. Catching the baby is important. That, that's important too. But a large number of that is, is um, too uh, hard. Wouldn't she be dealing with this? The midwife would come in like when she's about six months pregnant to know how to be there, to know what time this baby's going to come to this earth, uh, well, to know how to come and check blood pressure, how far has she turned, and different things. Mm -hmm. well, so, that, right, so she would come every three weeks. No, no, this is when, this, this well, I'm thinking about a home birth, basically, too. This is when the, the, the doula, it's because they have doulas, birth doulas. Mm -hmm. They have doulas who come at, in the home after the baby's born. Yeah, exactly. They are doulas who work with the woman during her pregnancy. So they have their different uh, groups mm -hmm. of doulas doing mm -hmm. different things. Mm -hmm. The midwife, and see, we, we, we need we need midwives. We need our black midwives. It's, very, it's, it's not that hard to become a doula. And I'm, and I'm not um, tearing the, the doula down. But I think we need more midwives in our community. We need doulas too. We we need to teach the family how to be doulas. Yeah. yeah. You mm -hmm. see that, that that we need to you know reteach them, get them back on on, on board because that, that's what they did. What is the training and the skills of a midwife? Uh, it it varies. Um, to be a midwife, uh, you could be a midwife with a master's, get a master's degree from one of the so-called schools like Columbia and. Um, um, downstate those schools, or you could be a nurse and then become a, get, get advanced training, maybe a year or so. Uh, if you're not a nurse, or so if you're not a, um, it, it might take two or three years to, to become mm -hmm. a midwife. Mm -hmm. It takes like a weekend or two to become a doula. You, you, they do they have weekend mm -hmm. um, classes, this, mm -hmm. this sort of thing. And I'm, they're very necessary, but we, we all, we need the, the midwife. Yeah. It's a program, you know, and people are getting paid for it. So, you know, I sort of questioned it. Mm -hmm. and, and I knew that, I know that you do need someone there after you give birth. You, to help you. you definitely need someone to help you. First of all, you might be in postpartum. Yeah. You don't know it. Yeah, exactly. And then, yeah, and you don't want, and, and you're not, you're sort of agitated when it comes to having to get up, you hear the baby cry, you know. Well, and half a newborn and baby is a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, you, 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 you need to have someone to help you. Someone to help you, but maybe you don't know how to, maybe this baby doesn't like the breast on this side. Maybe she needs to be turned on the opposite side. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe mm -hmm. that woman needs to know, in case you're bleeding excessively, you need you to, you to, you to let us know. Yeah. Or whatever the symptoms are, Someone in that family needs to know right. as well. Right. Bring, bring a person a hot tray of food. I'm a nurse and I did a, um, I was doing some home visits and there was this man who, I, I, this male person, uh, and I was his nurse. He had this um, home health aide come into the home to, to feed him, prepare his meals, this sort of thing. Um, but I noticed that for this particular home helper that came into the house, you would come there. I used to visit him every day because he had a wound. But you could smell the coffee brewing and the, 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 the breakfast churning. And she really cooked, she prepared his food with, with such love. And you could sort of see his energy change too. He even got involved with eating his food. And mm -hmm. it was just such a, uh, it just made me sort of see how important it is to work with someone with, with love and with, uh, that, with that kind of energy. And, and, and so mm -hmm. when you see someone that you don't know, the doctors come in, they don't, they, you might not even get the doctor whom you saw during your pregnancy. It might be someone who you never saw before and never will see again. So you don't know. It's, it's not a, the hospital is a hospital to be sick. It's not, it should not be a place where women are, are treated the way they're being treated. Mm -hmm. There are many articles taking place right now. Why are hospitals failing black women, for one? 
that they, they have, they have, there's a bunch of articles that are, that are coming out because the people are beginning to see that the maternal death rate is increasing. Mm -hmm. Babies are just dying, mothers are dying, mm -hmm. and um, we have to do something about it. Okay, I have a, two, a quickie. Mm -hmm. In these exercise classes that the children, young people go to, mm -hmm. well, I remember an exercise class where they talked about pushing, mm -hmm. and pushing, and I think pushing is a misnomer. <laughs> okay, because well, it's not pushing from the vagina down. Oh no, you know it's it's definitely not. It's, it's abdominal. It's abdominal pushing, but once. Once that woman gets to know, and you say, Mama, Mama, how does she know? Mommy, the baby's coming. The baby's coming. Mm. So how does she know the yeah. baby's coming? Yeah. She can feel the she pressure. Can, she can feel that pressure. Yes. The pressure. That pressure yes. that comes from the ab abdomen and, and works its works its way down. down. That's right. And when, 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 when that happens, that woman, she has to push. Well, pushing yeah. one way, from what I have heard, mm -hmm. pushing from the vagina is one way. but. They said, no, you push from the back, like you um, eliminating, mm -hmm. you know, from defecating, I should say. That's the push. Am I right? No, you are right. Okay. Um, but you have to get into that. Your body has to, you have to, mind and body, right. you have to feel that. And once those women do feel, come on, mommy, come on, come on. I want you to take a deep breath and grunt. So to speak, as opposed to ah, you can't use your That's right. your throat there being very different from here. You gotta breathe from here. Exactly. <laughs> when that pressure hits you, what you gonna do? That's right. You're gonna you push. push down. You, you are better gonna, push you have down. No choice. You have I'm not saying not to push, but which, yeah, the, the which, which area do you push? This what one? area is pushing down? That's what you Just have. keep on that's pushing. pushing. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> a song now. Because that baby's pushing out. That's true. So you're going to bend over and help this baby push out. Exactly. You can't think about no back. That pain ain't coming from your back. That no, that's ain't the coming back. from here. Not the back. Okay. And then, you know, the we'll pain talk. The pain changes. <laughs> when, it's, when it's time for that baby to be born, we'll it's, a, it's a different sensation. It's not yeah. the same. It's not like, it's not pain. It's that urge. <laughs> that between the pain and the urge, and I don't know. Pressure. Whatever you it is, you still you help push. it. You that's, help that's it. True. That's true. Okay. That's it. It becomes unbearable. <laughs> no. Okay. Unbearable, all I want to do is let it come out. If you push it, come on. Mom help you every way you can help you. <laughs> See, now, I think after the baby's born that the woman should be a release. She should be catered. She yes, have a yes. nice meal brought to her. Right. Absolutely. No, I don't want she nobody be, to bother me. Just leave. Oh, she <laughs> should be made like, like a queen that, that, that she has become. She should really be made That's to so feel beautiful. really yeah. good about herself. Mm -hmm. It's very, yeah. it's empowering. Yeah. I did it. To have a baby, yes. To have a baby for it. nine I months. And I, and I did then it. Then you got to push that sucker out. Ooh. <laughs> Can't find what you want to eat. I'm on my walk from the east to the west, downtown, uptown, looking for rice pudding. Couldn't find that rice pudding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you have certain needs mm -hmm. as far you as do. taste. taste. You do, yeah. you really yeah. do. As far as taste. What, what, what is that What called? was your need, rice uh, pudding? I wanted and that rice pudding. And what do you want? Peach coffee. Yeah, and oranges. <laughs> and oranges. I'm trying to think. Mm. I like oranges. rice pudding too, and I never and peaches wanted rice pudding. No, I never want no rice pudding. What, what do they call it? Urges? Not, not urges. I yeah, what the urges expression so. is that pe that women have. But you, it's, it's, it's just best to give it give it to them. Yeah, what I liked when I was pregnant was spinach. <laughs> who, who wants spinach? But it was, it w became delicious to me, and I don't know if I've ever had spinach before. That. <laughs> so, I, that's a phenomenon like that oh, needs yes. to be studied, maybe. Yes, yes, the body <laughs> the gets taste. Well, yeah. get real Man, funny when you're it. pregnant, boy. Woo. And they say what? The birth bomb. The birth bomb? Birth bomb. 
Bird, Bird you don't mark. want oh, yes, something. Yes, yes, yeah, I've heard, yes. Because you can't get it and you have something on its shape. I got a breast, a shape of a breast right on my. My mother wanted a chicken breast and she couldn't get it. Do <laughs> <laughs> you believe that? What can you and say? You know, and I'd be wondering, is it true? But then I got a mark on there. You, you can't you can say, because, I mean, it's people are able to say, yes, you see that grape mark on his buttocks? Mm -hmm. That was because I didn't get my grapes when I wanted. Let's see the grapes there. Yeah. What can, can you say? Can you say? You just have to listen. Mm -hmm. who, who knows? Who knows and then sometimes, you know, in, in, in birthing, working with a woman, Sometimes I notice mm -hmm. your hands when you like when you're doing your maneuvers. Maybe your hands should have gone this way. You were going to move them that way, but no, they turn to the right. So sometimes things happen without you even um, having any knowledge of it. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's as if someone has interfered or came and, and helped you. Turn it this way mm -hmm. as opposed to that way. That's God. It is God. It is God. It's true. And that's so, what we have to pay attention to. Yes. In our that's in right. appreciating us as mm -hmm. a people, we have to under, we have to understand that we've come up in the enslaver's mindset. Right. As as black as we might be, we tend to look at things through their eyes and measure things. Mm -hmm. They are unable to measure the spiritual peace because that, that they, they ain't got that. Mm -hmm. So when we go spiritual, they brush it off because they can't measure it. Mm -hmm. They true. can't measure it. <laughs> can't they can't measure it. They can't measure Black yeah, women's measure. Yeah. intuition. Mm -hmm. They can't come right. you know, exactly. And we have to, we have to affirm one another, especially when somebody has a feeling. You know, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think go affirm that mm -hmm. you ain't gonna lose nothing no you know what i'm saying you when you look at it if, anyway mm -hmm. um the appreciation of what we have but don't know we have that's mm -hmm. how i learned it mm -hmm. what we have but don't know we have mm -hmm. and and that, that spiritual piece is uh another study that we have to do with sister non Nankululeko. Nankululeko, that's what I was trying to tell you, sister. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, no, hey, listen, we're at, the black end. We're, we're at the black end of, of this session, mm -hmm. and this is only an opener. This is only an opener, mm -hmm. uh, because based on the dialogue here, there are a lot of other questions to fill in, information that sister has for us, and... Mm -hmm. uh, also, Sister Jenkins. Sister Jenkins is the is the wisdom table midwife. We didn't ask her what the name of her midwife was. We didn't That's ask true. her how she knew about all of what she knows all about. The, mm -hmm. Her aunt played a key role, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Plus, we don't have Char Charlene, Charlemagne, mm -hmm. Charlene, 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 Charlene with it with added this, that, and the Your other. Mother. And um, so we got a lot of. The wisdom table is the correct name for this group. I'm not including mm -hmm. myself this group because you have so much knowledge to get out to our people. Mm -hmm. And doing a talk show, even if it's just discussion among yourselves, is important in terms of getting the information out that would not otherwise be out. If we can save one young mother mm -hmm some pain and some aggravation and save one baby, then we've done our job exactly. by this program. So, my sister, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And come again. Thank you. Thank you. I enjoyed your yeah. session, yeah. and I want a private <laughs> session <laughs> over to the left. Yeah. <laughs> this subject, yeah. And this has been the Wisdom that. Table. Okay. A class in itself. Yeah. God bless Wonderful. us all. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you know, it's important.